Welcome to Jazz Sources. Today, I got a special video for you. Today, we're... Uh, Kitty, can you say something? Uh, Kitty says, what's up? Uh, today, we're going to be making a knife from this lawnmower blade without a forge. So, we're going to be using nothing but grinders. We're going to be using uh, bench grinders, belt grinders, and angle grinders to be able to make this knife from completely... F from the blade to the finished knife. Now, uh, Kitty, say what's up. Hey. Say what's up. Can you see Kitty? Kitty, can you say what's up? Kitty says what's up. Okay. Now, llama blades are already preheat treated. So we don't have to heat treat this knife as long as if we don't ruin the temper in it. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to grind it and cut. Whenever I go to cut out the blade, I'm going to cut a little bit. Go down. Okay, get it down. So I'm going to be cutting a little bit. Cooling it off, cutting a little bit, cooling it off, cutting a little bit, cooling it off, like that, so we don't ruin the temper in this part of the blade. Now, back here, it was heated up to be able to flatten it out, but if you got a big enough blade and wide enough, then you ain't got to do that. But in this video, uh, let's say it's like that, but it was heated up and flattened out, but I'm not using the forge for anything else, so I don't have a lumbar blade big enough to have, to, uh, Heat it up without having to heat it up and flatten out. But if I did, I'd be using that, but I don't have one. So, for in the sake of this video, we're going to say that you did. But back here is not... The, from here back, it did not mess it up. So, we're going to be using, like, up in this area, through here. Well, up in here, it never got hot enough. So, we're going to be ref we're going to be making a knife without having to heat treat it. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And... Subscribe so you can see more cute little kitty. Now, uh, question to see is this cat look like a gremlin to me? So you can see the cute. Now, subscribe so you can see the cute little kitty. See, so cute. How? Oh, he's gonna say what's up. Say what's up. Okay, so kitty says what's up. So, here we go. No. Kitty says, sus sub see, look at the camera. Look dead at the camera in the eye. Kitty says, subscribe. So, here we go. Okay. So, on this blade, here's Mr. Kitty. Well, it doesn't miss us. So, here's the blade. What we can do is through here, use this here as the handle material. Size. So, back up, back up. Through here, we're going to have to grind it to be able to get this angle part here out. So, what I'm kind of thinking of is. Hold on, let me get my cap. What well, I'm thinking we could do, let me also grab a piece of soap stuff. No, it's in my pocket. So, once you get the soap stone out, and you figure all this stuff, Mr. Kitty, you need to help out. You're not helping. Alright. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the width of here and make this all one ball. Like this. Okay, so now we got one ball piece of this. What we're going to do is we just come. Well, we need to go a little bit more wider. Okay. See if we can see. You can see, see the scrap line that comes right through here? This is the scrap line that. Uh, it's going to be the width of the blade. So, what I'm kind of thinking about is kind of like a bushcraft, kind of a... The type of knife that you use, kind of like a utility knife in a way back in th that time. But what it can be used for is just practically anything from skinning to whittling, anything like that. It's not too big of a blade, but it's not too small. And what it's going to be is... Let's see how big this handle will be. handle's going to be right up in here. We're just going to make this here with a nice snug fit. Let me see if I can get my soapstone out so we can be able to do this a lot easier. And I'm going to wait a second for trying to get the soapstone out and uh, just enjoy Mrs. Kitty. Okay. So we're back. Cute kitty. Cute little tummy. I think this cat ate too much. Let's go with a four-inch handle on. Right. So, tomato, sorry, missus. 
see. Let's go with a 5 inch blade. That'd be not too big a knife blade, but not too small. It'd be a good little size. If you go 6 inches, then you're more looking at like a high knife blade. And we ain't going to go with a high knife. We're going to go with a knife that could be used for practically anything that you want. So, all this material through here is not going to be used. All this and the shader is not going to be used. I'm thinking probably what we might do is use two pins on it. Just to, we're going to use copper pins, make it a little bit more easier. We, I got a piece of brass, we can put a little brass guard right there. And what we're going to do is we'll come in here. Let's see, let's see what this will look like. Just, why are you kicking me? There, we'll go kind of like that, and then we'll just do a, once we cut this out, then we mark out the bevel line, and then we'll be good. And we got a cute little get get. Kitty cat says subscribe. I'm going to put, hold on, right through, right through here. Can you see it? Right here, it's going to be subscribe. Right in here. There we go. So, here we go. Hey, look at the camera. Say subscribe. Look. So cute. Okay, for anyone who's wondering, this is the type cutting disc I use. I'm not sponsored. Uh, go to Benchmark Abrasives and email them and tell them to subscribe and to uh, sponsor me. But this is the type of disc that I use. And now these here are metal stainless steel. They work just fine for high color steel. Actually, I think I kind of like the stainless ones for color steel a little bit better. I never made a knife from stainless steel, but one day. One day, we're going to do that. So, I'm going to get cutting out the rough shape once I put the blade on here, and then we're going to get to it. I found this kind of shaky. Okay, for anyone who is wanting the best way to hold your knife uh, without knife eyes, is like this. I don't know if I got a shot that I'm going to use myself once this is going to be kind of shaky, you know. You take a piece of angle iron, you clamp inside the vise, and I'll give you a... One second. See, you just clamp in the vise, and then you take a C-clamp, and you clamp a hold to the, the angle iron to the blade or whatever you're working with. And it holds it perfectly flat so it doesn't move around. And it keeps your blade flat. So that's a really easy way how I like to do it. So um, if you try it and you like it but you, and you don't, or you don't care for it, do whichever one. But uh, this will kind of save you in the beginning on not having to make a knife fight. One day I'm going to make one. I'll do a video on it. But right now I ain't got one. So here we go. I'm going to start cutting this out. Once I get this all cut out, then I'll come back. Okay, here is our rough cut to shape and all. Now what we're fixing to start doing is... I'm going to put it on the belt grinder, we're going to grind this all nice and good and shape and all. What I'm thinking about doing is coming in here and cutting a little bit this down a little bit on um, these two parts of it. And kind of let the blade part come through here up a little bit higher. Or what I'm thinking about doing is coming in here grinding this here out a little bit. Because I was wanting to put a piece of brass in here but I was thinking that would be kind of hard to do. No, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to just slide... Uh, probably glue the brass back here or something. I don't know if I'm still going to do the brass or not. I may just do all piece of wood. So I'm going after I get to grind all this. I've, I'll let you know then. Okay. Instead of going the full tank, I decided to go with a hidden t tank. And yeah, it's a little bit offset here, but that ain't going to hurt nothing. I'm thinking about coming in here and just grinding this here off a little bit right in here to get these two shoulders correct. But uh, here's the shape of it now. So what we're still doing is grinding the bevels and 
the reason why I decided not to go with the full tank and go with the hidden tank is I got this piece of brass that I was able to hammer out coal. What I'm going to do is, um, after we grind the bevels and all, uh, move out of the way, kitty, is do some holes in this and just follow it to shape and, and follow up in here to make that real nice section for it and then just attach it straight off into there. So, going to set you up, going to start grinding the bevels and here we go. And look how cute that kitty is. Okay, I got the blade stuck in the vise. I'm going to rough grind this here out with the belt grinder with the 40 grit flap disc. Then we're going to move it to the belt grinder, finish it out, and then we're going to uh, set up the brass and handle and all that. So I'm going to start grinding the bevels with this, and then we're going to go to the belt grinder. So here we go. Okay. This here is the type flap disc that I use. is a 40 grit. And... For anyone who was wondering that, and these are aluminum oxide. And once again, not sponsored, but go email and tell them to sponsor me. But, um, this here is the type of flap dish I use. And so I got the first bevel over here ground down, and I made sure I quenched it multiple times in water so we had not ruined the heat treat. I fixed grind this side with a half inch wide bevel. Oh, uh, if you want to figure out what degrees that is, you can figure that out. I'm not going to sit there and try to do the math for that. I know I can, but I ain't going to. But, oh, so I'm finishing grind this side here out. Once I get it all ground out, then we're going to go to the belt grinder and finish grinding. Okay, I got the bevels all ground down. Oh, well, with the angle grinder, so what I'm doing now is I got fall. I'm coming back and I am draw filing across the blade and filing at angles and all. Just trying to make sure that these are perfectly flat before we start uh, hitting out the belt grinder. Just get everything nice and square, make everything a little bit easier. And then, uh, before we also do go to the belt grinder, I'm going to use the files. I'm going to come in here and clean up this little notch up in here. Where the brass is going to slide down, make sure it's all one even width and a nice table going all the way down. There ain't no high rises that's going to mess us up on trying to mount the brass. So, I'm just going to let you all know that. And after I get to doing this on both sides, then we're going to go to the belt grinder. So that's what I want to say while I'm sitting here doing this. Have you ever noticed when you're sitting down real low, how painful it is on your arms sit here and draw file? I can't stand up, but I think I, and then I decided I'm going to sit down, but I think it was kind of small of me to sit, not to stand on me. So, I'm just walking the back and forth, make sure it runs all the way up to the back headline. Kind of scratch all down up in there, because sometimes whenever you grind with an angle grinder, like down here is the edge, and back up here, my knuckles are the bevel line, it can have a curve in it. So what I'm having to do is down over here, there's a pretty nice little rise up, but up through here it's kind of more flat, so I'm having to walk down this hill to make sure it's a nice angle going straight down to it. So, I'm going to finish doing it, grind, filing this down, and then we'll head to the other belt grinder, and then we'll be ready to mount the brass on here. File it to shape and get all hooked up, and then we'll be done. After we do the handle and all that mess, yeah. Okay, as you can see now, I got all, besides right up in here, I got all drop, drop off. That was completely flat, and also I got a little bit that I didn't get right up in there. Just take some walk up with the belt grinder, I'll get all up in there. But I got the rough shape up here, all up in there now. I still had it done up in here yet, but I'll do that after we get to doing all this. I'm going to take this here at the 400 grit. Then we're going to have to set up everything, the rest of this, and then... Now we're going to go ahead and probably take this here on up to six or 800. Might do just 600. And I'll come up in here and get all this here all nice and straightened up. And oh, after we get the brass fitted, then we'll start working on the handle. So here we go. Okay, I got the blade all ground down to 400 grit, and now if it's to be coming back with uh, 224, 6, and then, oh, 
with sandpaper paint I'm gonna hand sand it and then I already got up in here fixed up for the brass and then we can start setting up for the brass so I'm gonna get hand sanding and then once I get through with that then I'll, I'll be right back Okay, I got the blade now polished all the way out to 1500 grit, and something I just want to say that I like to do is come in and take a piece of duct tape. Magic tape will work, but I like using duct tape because it's one solid piece of tape. And just take it and lay it right across the blade where I just get. Whoop, okay, it's coming this way, so. and completely cover the finished blade part of it because if you don't then it is just going to get scratched up from being on the piece of metal or wood or whatever you clamp it down to now you flip it over and you now got this piece the finished blade on this side completely covered and protected while this side here you could be able to walk in and sand on it so that's it that's what I said that like to do so now I'm fixing to go 400 uh two mm, that's um uh, loud thunder uh 220 400 600 1500 and then buffing I uh, had a scotch right pad but I'm not going to use scotch right I'm just going straight up to 1500 polish out that last little bit and then going to go to the buffing wheel so here we go as you can see I got a super, super, super fine finish on this thing. So now if it's hit on the um, buffing wheel, then we can buff it all out. Okay, let me put this here on my glove. You can see right now I ain't wiped off all the crud off of this. But you can see we got a super, super mirror fine finished polish. And I'm going to clean it off. Let me go. Grab it real quick. Well, I got to get some oil on it. But you can see. Well, here, let's use a little bit of wood next. Yes, I know this on my glove, but I don't care. I ain't going to kill it. Well, let's see if we can see the phone. You can see my shirt. Booyah. You can see the phone. It's black and yellow, so you can't really too much see. But see, you can see my shirt in it. So we got a pretty good mirror finish. You can't see I ain't wiped it off on this side. But we got a good nice fin mirror finish polish. So hold on one second. 
So, we got the mail stamp polish on, that what I'm fixing to do is clean it up. We're going to put tape on this. Then we're going to start setting up for the brass to come in here. Like you can see, this side here is a little bit lower. We're going to file all that to the right shape and sizes and everything. Then we're going to fit, drill and fit up the brass, and then so we'll kind of handle it. So, here we go. I now got the gold all attached up to the knife handle. Got it all polished out. It still it moves around somewhere now, but we gotta fit it up in there nicely. Now it is time to still work on the handle. And what I'm thinking about for that is this little uh, uh, piece of seal. I'm gonna use it and going to shape out the handle and all uh, for it. And then I'm gonna give a uh, grind it all out and then sand it out to polish it out. And then we can uh, put the hole in it for the tang. Then glue it all together and then we'll be done. This is how you can tell when you've been setting on wood. Look at my hair. It's full of sawdust. Second. Is I am covered in sawdust. All the way down my leg and everything. <coughs> can you see it? Look at my arm. It's just full. I saw this. Okay. I got the little brass piece all finished up and got it to a fit zone nicely. Well, I had to have the light on because, it's, as you can see, it's dark outside. So I got it. You can't see it. I showed it in, up in a close up here in a minute. I got it all fitted up nicely, got it all rounded off and everything like that, so it's a nice little gold. So, um, I got the blade also all finished up, but we got all wrapped up in tape. This is going to end it for part one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends, so then whenever I post part two, you can be able to see it whenever we're doing the handle and do all the finish work and sharpening of this. So, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends.